Hey YouTube, today I'll be showing you how Tesla's full self-driving software is unable to detect objects and in the majority of cases, FSD fails to avoid most objects. Recently, I was scrolling through my phone and I saw that the IIHS awarded Tesla a top safety plus pick for its AI vision for its ability to detect objects and slow and avoid them. So with that, I thought, hey, I have a Tesla, it relies on AI vision. So let's throw objects in front of my car and see how well it performs. We have an orange bucket, a shipping pallet, an office chair, a garbage can, a gear keg, a barbecue grill, and finally, a pickup truck. So let's get started. For context, Tesla's full self-driving system is really advanced in normal situations it normally performs all right. Occasionally, it's capable of driving me 15 miles through suburbs with zero interventions to the hospital. Other times, it wants to take me down railroad tracks. As with any form of technology, it is still in development. However, today we are going to go a step further on purpose by throwing hazardous objects in front of the system. Do not think this test speaks for the system as a whole, and please do not try this at home. I once had a five gallon bucket filled with concrete fall off a truck in front of me and destroy my BMW M3. Let's see how Tesla detects such an object. Oh God. Jesus Christ. I didn't do anything. God damn it, I like that bucket. Now, before you comment saying, hey, that's not FSD beta, that's autopilot. The visualizations are different. I helped develop the software for Tesla. This is FSD. There is autopilot, FSD, and FSD beta. Today, we are testing the normal FSD stack as every paying customer receives this, and this is what IIHS most likely had during their test. You'll notice I have auto steer and emergency braking turned on, so the car should be able to steer around or apply the brakes for me. For the remainder of the test, I'll be performing steering input only as necessary, and will never press the brake or accelerator as the car should brake and or accelerate for me with the settings. It also should steer for me though. Next up is an office chair. I programmed and labeled quite a few of these in the past while working at Tesla. Let's see how well it detects the object. All right, let's try that again, but this time we'll spin the chair so it no longer is considered a static object. There's no nothing on the chair part. Here you'll see Tesla show a pedestrian on screen instead of a chair, yet it still fails to stop. You'll notice that this time the car tried to brake, which is a little weird, but it didn't try to brake in time. I was the one who get, took over and did the actual turning of the vehicle, but all that coming to a stop was done by the Tesla itself. And so yes, it is slowing down and trying to brake, but it, it's doing so one, too late and not efficiently enough. Next up, we have a beer keg. You'll notice it depicts the image of a trash can on screen, but the last second changes its mind to an orange traffic cone. Regardless of what object it thinks is in front, it makes zero indication of one to slow or avoid the object in its path. This is quite terrifying. Why does it not detect these objects? Why? Why is it not slowing down for them? So in this one we put a garbage can because obviously we do know that it detects garbage cans. So it should, in theory, stop for this one. Oh fuck. Again, I didn't do any of the acceleration or braking or anything on that one was just steering. Earlier I braked on other ones, but this one we're just doing steering. I'm not on the throttle anymore and I'm on the wrong side and the car is still just doing cruise control. It didn't, again, it missed the garbage can. It sees it on the screen, but it doesn't slow down and avoid it. Now we are testing a shipping pallet falling over so it's no longer considered a static object. The car displays the object as a trash can, but you'll see it disappears from the screen as soon as it starts moving and falling. We ran this test again without the pallet falling to make it a static object. This time, it shows the object as a trash can and alerts the driver to catch the same truck. However, the object disappears from the screen and the FSD system fails to apply the brake. After a third test, it shows the object as a trash can again, alerts the driver of a potential danger, but fails to apply the brakes. But it does keep the object on screen through the entire scenario this Or time. collision warning. I'm getting the warning, but FSD is not, en not engaging or doing anything about it. Now, it's barbecue grill time. 
Jesus fuck. So that time I did press the brake a little early, but I don't think it was gonna stop, so I'll run it again. After lining back up in the opposite direction, it was successfully able to detect the barbecue grill as a garbage can. Nope. It was able to alert the driver, but it failed to apply the brakes. On our third and final attempt of the barbecue grill, it again shows the object as a trash can. This time it fails to brake, and the object disappears from screen during an emergency situation. I didn't do any of the acceleration or the brake in there, but I did do the steering. That is interesting, but it can't auto steer around an object or brake really in a significant time. That's a very interesting data point. For our last test, I had a pickup truck pull out in front of me to see if the Tesla could finally engage that emergency braking for me. Pull out, pull out. Good luck. So that was all me. That was not Tesla whatsoever. That was entirely me. And now it's saying take over immediately. Vehicle departing lane. So apparently it's scared that I'm departing the lane, but apparently it had nothing when a pickup truck pulls out in front of it on a wide open lane. Unfortunately, it failed. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's mock IIHS video using Tesla's full self-driving software. Please remember not to confuse this with beta, and what I tested today is available on Tesla's, produced after 2006, whose owners paid for the FSD build, which costs $12,800 at the time of this filming. Please like this video if you made it this far, and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on our part two video, because we will be bringing lots more and future projects to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye.